Code.org, Katie, and other, uh, we're going to look at our schedule because we have students out there with showcase uh, that are ready for you to come and ask them questions. And uh, but we're going to we're going to have a couple more folks who want to talk to us, and then we'll take that break. We'll let you know. Katie, thanks for coming. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm sorry that I'm between you and a break. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it'll be useful and you'll find it interesting um, and it will be quick. Um, so I'm Katie Hendrickson. I work on state policy and government affairs for Code.org. Um, so Code.org is a nonprofit. You may have heard of the Hour of Code campaign that we do. Um, we have curriculum for elementary, middle, and high school. Uh, we do professional learning and we have a lot of great people who do our professional learning for our teachers. Uh, but we also do state and federal policy, and so that's what I focus on. Um, and I've been asked today to talk about uh, computer science standards. Uh, so before I get into that, though, I, I want to do a, a little brief uh, spiel about the policies that we work on generally. Uh, K-12 computer science standards is one of them. Um, and our coalition started thinking about allowing computer science to satisfy a graduation requirement. And we are currently working on that in Oregon. Um, and I'd love to talk to folks about how um, courses count at your school and how it affects you. I'd love to hear from teachers how this works. Um, we also work on computer science teacher certification uh, with pre-service and teacher preparation um, and changing policies to help that. Uh, but the big ones are these three that are circled, um, defining computer science, developing K-12 computer science standards at the state level, um, allocating funding towards computer science professional learning, which I saw this morning is an issue here in Oregon, um, and then also requiring all secondary schools to offer at least one computer science course. So that's that access opening the door piece. Um, so standards is really interesting and really exciting to talk about right now. Um, about a year ago, there was only one state that we could say had K-12 computer science standards, and now there's nine. Um, and there's a handful of other states too who are, uh, the departments of ed are exploring uh, standards or the legislature just passed a requirement so they're getting uh, their feet wet, figuring out what to do. Um, but it, there's a momentum here and it's really interesting and really exciting. Uh, so what can you do? I know that Oregon doesn't yet have K-12 computer science standards, um, but what can you do if you're teaching or if you're working on K-12 or elementary or middle school? Um, what are some guidance documents? So one of them, which I'm sure you've heard of, is the K-12 computer science standards. Um, the interim draft just came out last summer. Um, it's a fantastic document. They have really thought carefully about what is needed at each of these grade bands. Um, so level one, they have K-2 and 3-5 standards. Um, and those are designed to be, they're integrated into um, other content areas. At 6-8, they're designed to be either way. So they could be integrated into other content areas or it could be a standalone class. Uh, level 3A then is for high school and that is um, intended for all students. So if all students are going to graduate high school with a computer science background, this is what they would need to know. And then they also wanted to recognize that some students want to take a full pathway or a continuum of computer science and study more in depth. And so that's level 3B. Um, the final standards are still being worked on. I think they're actually, I think they're actually complete at this point, but they're being printed right now. Um, and those are going to be available at the CSTA conference this July. Um, I'm sure they'll have sessions about it. Um, and you know, if you're not able to go, you'll be able to find it on the website soon after. The other national uh, document that you could be looking at for guidance in computer science is the K-12 computer science framework. And I actually spent a year of my working life working on this document and its development, so it's very near and dear to my heart. Um, <laughs> uh, so you can find that at k12cs.org. The idea behind the framework is that it's this baseline of concepts and practices, um, kind of a higher level conceptual guide about what all students should be able to know and do. Uh, there are a lot of questions about the relationship between the framework and the standards and why we need both and why we have both. So just a quick um, explanation of, of that relationship. So the, the framework is kind of this higher level conceptual guide um, and it's kind of split up into discrete what students know and what students do. Um, so that's kind of what the framework is. It's not intended to be taken and, and placed directly into a class like a curriculum framework would be. Uh, the standards then, and the CSTA standards and many of these state standards I'm going to mention today, were developed based on the framework. So the idea is you can take the framework and you can adapt it to your context, um, and you can create measurable um, performance expectations or standards uh, based on that. 
So another way of looking at this, I love this visual, the framework is these discrete blocks of what students know and what they do, but we all know that in practice you don't know and do things separately, you have to combine them. Um, and so standards, like the CSJ standards, those combine those into statements of what students know and do in computer science. Uh, so the other thing I want to mention about the K-12 computer science framework is that in addition to these concepts and practices, uh, they only take up like a little section in the whole framework book. Uh, but there's also all these chapters around guidance. So uh, a vision for what computer science education looks like, CS for all. Um, equity in computer science education, what that looks like, how the framework can help inform that. Um, how to create standards based on the framework. Um, how the framework can inform curriculum, pathways, teacher certification, pre-service preparation, professional learning for teachers. Um, what computer science and early childhood education looks like, what pre-K could look like. Um, and then research that informs the framework. Um, and you can find all of those in the framework. You can also download, I should also say, you can download the PDF of the framework online for free. You can filter, you can look at all of the statements in different ways, and you can also purchase hardcover copies of the framework too. Uh, we're not making any profit off of those, those are totally at cost. Uh, but if you want your own hardcover copy, they're available. Um, just so that you have another little piece of the, the puzzle about what went into the K-12 computer science framework, it really truly is a product of the community. Uh, we engaged a lot of folks in uh, figuring out what this content looked like. Uh, the process was steered by five organizations, the Association for Computing Machinery, uh, Code.org, Computer Science Teachers Association, the Cyber Innovation Center, and the National Math and Science Initiative. Um, so very quickly, I just want to run through, actually I'm not going to run through all these, but you can look at them. But I wanted to, to call quick attention to how different states are looking at K-12 computer science standards. Um, and one thing that, that you might notice is I'm talking about K-12 standards. Almost every state probably has high school standards for CTE computer science courses. Um, but what we're trying to, to focus on is K-12, so that there's a pathway so that elementary and middle school um, students and teachers have standards to work towards at all of those grade levels. So some of, these have, some of these states have mandatory standards in elementary, optional in high school. Um, some are still working on implementation of that. Um, some of the states integrate the standards, like into their science standards or um, into their digital literacy standards. Um, and then a lot of them have been drawing from the documents that have already been developed for a national focus, like the CSTA standards and the K-12 computer science framework. Uh, and then these are states that are currently working on CS standards. I know that there are more than this who are also thinking about it and are exploring and want to review the new CSTA standards that are about to come out. Um, but you can really see the, the growth and momentum here. Uh, so thank you for letting me come here and talk to you all. This has been really great and I'd really love to talk to you afterwards. Uh, again, I really want to hear from you about what's happening in Oregon, how Code.org and our advocacy and policy team can help. Thank you.